what's up guys? It's Bradu. Uh, I'm gonna try a fun, hopefully fun, hopefully not nightmarish, and hopefully informational, probably a little too informational video about 89 Fleer um, and junk wax era in general and some of the risks about buying, you know, unopened um, but sealed wax, or cellos, or racks, or whatever. So I bought a collection from a local guy the other day <clears throat> that I was super excited about. It included two cello boxes and two rack boxes, which to my eyes looked fine and clean and perfect. Um, and I sat up all night the other night ripping into that and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and the... A lot of the 89 Fleer stuff was searched, it was tampered with, and I'm 100% I'm sure of that, <laughs> um, and I'll get to why as I rip into these. I am not 100% sure that this particular box has been tampered with, so I thought it would be a fun one to open while we talk about the whys and the hows and the what do I know and what can I speculate about? So some of the things I know about 89 Fleer. I opened about probably at least 25 wax boxes, maybe closer to 30 or more worth of. So I opened maybe, I think I opened a couple cello boxes before. Maybe a rack box, or at least enough rack packs to have made a box for different sources. And several, probably 20 or more wax, regular wax boxes. Um, we're looking for nice errors, we're looking for good rookies. So, some of the things that I've learned about it is there are definite sequences, that's the first thing. Um, so, if you pay attention, you can know when the whatever card it is you're looking for is coming up. Now, I can't help but notice this as much as I've ripped into, so we got nothing out of this pack. We got nothing exciting out of that pack. Um, but I kind of try to purposely not notice any more than I have to. Uh, I'm wondering if I can show you, though, an example of what I mean. And this is what makes a box like this so darn risky. Let's see if we got... I'll show you. Here's an example. I'll show you. I'm going. I'm going to my other box. All right. So I knew I had a pack staring at me with Jose Rijo right on top there, and I got Jose Rijo here in this pack we just opened. So at least to the stickers, you're going to see the same sequence once we get to the end. So that's all I'm trying to show you here. At this point in time, we got Rio, Illy Gas, Ali Hamaker, Boddicker, Barry Hill, Brock, and Lazorko. Now, the rest of this, I don't actually know based on this, but I knew we would at least, I'm just trying to prove the point that these are sequenced. You can buy, get them from different boxes or whatever. I think the sequence can change if you're looking at different print runs. So, for instance, I think the Billy Ripken full error fuckface is in one spot in a pack. Whereas I think the corrected ones can be all in a different spot. If that makes any sense. Let's see. Yeah. Let's hit something nice. So this per the box that this pack came out of, I am positive is searched, and I'll show you why right now. For starters, nothing good out of that pack. <laughs> and I don't jury's still out on the box I'm gonna mostly open from right now. <laughs> but the other night when I did only all my ripping. 
I ripped through a full rack box, so that's two, two, well, I'm not open while I talk. Uh, so that's two wax boxes worth of cards, roughly. Um, and a half of a cello box, the one that we just pulled that pack from. And that's, so that's roughly one wax box. So there's three wax boxes worth. So I should have close to three of every card. Uh, three Griffies, three Randy Johnsons, three Ripkins. Those are the big three that I tend to look for. Um, there are other good cards in the set. There are other errors. There are other rookies. Here's one. This is an error, Guillermo Hernandez. I've got him right here, too. He's got a little white-out spot on his jersey. <clears throat> and the earlier print run version has that butterfly. Pink butterfly on it. And I've also seen some with... Um, with part of that whited out, which is kind of funky. I feel like the white out one has been more rare than the butterfly, but that may just be that I've opened more boxes that are early print run. Um, I'm just not sure. There's another chance at an error. Tom Brookins. Now, given that out of this very pack, we pulled up Guillermo Hernandez, that was corrected, I think Tom Brookins will be corrected with the correct back. But it could say Heath, and I've pulled a couple... Brookins, so Tom Brookins. This is one of the errors that I actually did pull somewhere in, the, in my rip the other night. But Brookins with Heath on the back. Um, and they switched them, so Heath can have Brookins on the back or can have Heath on the back. So that's not an error. This is a later print run pack, at least. Um, I'm trying to keep. I'm trying to flip through cards and still keep my thought process straight about the point I'm trying to make. So, the other thing I've noticed in opening a whole bunch of 89 clear is it's got the best collation I've ever seen compared to any other set. And what I mean by that is that you very rarely get. At any duplicates at all within the same wax box. Um, out of the 20-some boxes that I've opened, I almost always get a Griffey, a Ripken, a Johnson. I think I can only count a few times that I've ever had a duplicate of any of those, like two of one of those cards, cards out of the same box. And... I can only count a few times that I've even missed, like, two of them. You usually get all three. If not, you sh should get two. You're really, really unlucky if you only get zero or one of them. Or the box was pack-searched by someone who either opened up the packs, took out the good cards, and sealed the wax packs back up. Or, if it's a rack or cello, someone who knows there's Brookins again. corrected one, who knows the sequencing, um, and is pulling out those packs that are going to land on Ripken, Johnson, Griffey. <laughs> so that's the danger here, and that's what I was pretty convinced was going on. So if I've opened many, many wax boxes that had all three Griffey, Johnson, and Ripken, to open an entire rack box, which is two wax boxes, and get zero of them, but I got four packs out of that one rack box that had Tom Glavin on the top. Not just Tom Glavin at all, but on the top. So I'm assuming that Tom Glavin, there's a nice little more in there, that the Tom Glavin pack was a loser with no key cards in it. And it was. I opened one just to make sure, and it was, yeah. Um, so the rack box that I had that had 24 rack packs was absolutely searched by someone who knew the sequences and pulled out the packs with the good cards and left the packs with the bad cards. Now the cellos I've done have been a little hit and miss. I do feel like I'm not hitting the odds I should on the good cards. So 
case in point, I am, what, five or six <laughs> uh, cello packs in to the good box, the, you know, the re theoretically good box, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, and I've hit no, none of the key rookies and no errors. Is it John Moses? Corrected. He's one of the hardest errors to get. Um, out of everything I opened the other night, I got... This was the spoils. So I had one Griffey. I had one Ripken that was corrected. A couple Biggios. A Smoltz. A few Sheffields. So, again, this was out of three wax boxes worth of... So I should technically probably have three... It was more than three wax boxes worth, because I opened the full rack box, another almost half a rack box, honestly, of the other one, a half a cello box, and almost half of the other cello box. So probably four boxes worth. I should probably have four of every good card, or at least three. I've got one Griffey, which was kind of a shock, one Ripken that was the black box corrected version that's the most common. A couple BGO rookies. I did have a couple packs that had BGO on top, which is kind of cool. I set those aside. Only one Smoltz. Uh, three Sheffields. Zero Randy Johnsons in all of that that I opened. Zero. So just when I was certain that all of this stuff that I got what had been searched for both errors and rookies, this is, and out of what I just showed you is all of the, I use Beckett not like as a be-all, end-all by any stretch, but this is any rookie or error that's listed in the monthly Beckett. Uh, that's all I got out of basically four boxes worth. Um, and then, while I was opening packs off camera yesterday in the afternoon, just kind of like, ah, these are all duds anyway, I was shocked when I pulled this bad boy, and I've never pulled one of these, Scribble. Uh, worth less than the full error, the fuckface one, but but more certainly more rare. Again, I opened 25 boxes plus, and that's the first I've seen of those, and I've hit at least a dozen. These were the only errors I saw. Kevin Romine, I barely count. There's probably a couple more Kevin Romines I pulled out, because the error is more common than the corrected version on that one. Uh, but the Tom Brookins Heath... These were corrected about the same time that the Ripken was corrected, I think. So, I kind of get the feeling like this particular cello box I'm opening from now was Frankenstein, meaning the work, it wasn't all actually cuts that came in that same box, but that were maybe kind of picked through and then put back together in this box, and a couple of Ripkins slipped through. <laughs> um, a Ripken and a Griffey slipped through. Both Ripkins and the Griffey came out of the cello pot packs, not the rack packs. There's Glavin, so I just told you I had four Glavins on top. Now watch how bad the Glavin pack is, and that's why. Oh, well, that's a cool card, but I'm not going to have any rookies or any errors, I'll tell you that. Barry Larkin. Andre the Hog Dawson. So that's what you get <laughs> with the Glavin on top. Don't tell anybody who was on I pulled at least a couple of those aside, hoping there's a Glavin collector that wants them. They're not going to rip them anyway. Now, this second half of the pack is a different sequence, uh, so it has nothing to do with Glavin being on top. Though, you could reverse it and kind of possibly know what's coming backwards. Hello, Nelson Santavina, Kevin Seitzer. I recognize this sequence, and this is good news. Um, I told you, I don't really know, but I know a couple cards, and you know something's coming up. So, let's see what we got. There's my first Randy. Again, alluding to the fact that maybe this one isn't search. Randy Johnson. We want to see something on the screen, not just black. But everything I've pulled that was even errors was late print corrected errors, like the Ripken Scribble, that's halfway through the print run, right? <laughs> so, I don't think we're going to get any Johnson variation, but who knows? It looks pretty black. Mm. Put it right under the light so I can see. Ooh! 
That's pretty black. But that's my first Remedy Johnson anyway. I believe that is probably the fully correct one. I don't see really any hints of the lettering or different colors. But at least we got him. So I still have hope that is the pocket. I still have hope that um I've got half of this rack box or this cello box left still. What is it, 18? Six. Oh no. I don't have quite half. I'm just into the second half of the box now. So we have almost half of this box, so that's good. Half a box should yield. Uh, I haven't pulled a Griffey out of this, I don't think. I think it should yield at least one more Johnson, one more Ripton, one more Griffey, if we're getting the right odds. So, we'll see. I may not rip them all right now. I was just trying to have fun and prove a point, too. <clears throat> but these look pretty good. I mean, I did get a Randy Johnson. Kind of lighter. Jimmy Key. Some stickers, a monitor, Tony Pena, bit of a dud pack here, it looks like. Yep. Um, not a whole lot going there. Tommy John. Um, yeah, I'm going to save at least a few of these, but I'll open a couple more. Maybe we can see if we can get to a uh, Ripken. Or, and or Griffey. The bad thing is I do not know for sure if the Ripken I got that was black box was out of this particular box. I think it was, so I think I've already got two Ripkins out of this box. But I'm just not 100% sure, because I did kind of go back and forth, and I was pretty darn sure by the time I hit anything that, uh, that these had all been searched through already anyway. So, there have been at least a few surprises. So, I'm just, I can't quite tell yet. The jury's still out on this particular box. I'm not hitting a lot, that's for sure. But that's at least a Ripken and at least a Johnson out of this box. I think the Griffey came out of the other box. Slip through. I don't know. I don't know. Never mind. Let's drop that one because I really am guessing. Smiley. I love John Smiley because he never smiles. And I like Bull I Love and there's the wrong Ripkin. And I don't think you could ever get both Ripkins in the same sequence. I don't believe I've seen that. Maybe in the second half of the pack here. Jim Wallowander. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, the other thing that's interesting about this, going back to the errors and why I think these were searched for not only um, the, the big cards, the Ripken, Griffey, Johnson. I, I don't know that I've seen a single Neil Allen, which makes me wonder if at one point somebody was searching for those. And I haven't seen many Ashby's. And I haven't seen many Manu Trio's. I have seen a couple at Vandenberg's and Brookins and Heath. But I wonder if even those kind of subpar errors were not. Um, or if somebody was you know, kind of seeking them out or whatever. I'm going to do two more packs from this and save, save a few packs out of this box and then switch, switch to the... Uh, Actually, I don't know that I can, because at this point, until I hit at least something else, it's more like that Johnson, that Randy Johnson slipped through the cracks than the Barry Bonds. Oh, look. Look, look, look. Ken Griffey Jr. Okay. Now, this seems like a legit box, because I've now pulled Randy, Ripken, and Griffey. It's not a great condition card, which is kind of too bad. These, you know, a Griffey Junior Rookie is sweet, um, but not a whole lot of monetary value unless you're in a position of 
having a perfect condition card and sending it in to get graded or whatever. All right. Hey, now I'm doing something. I should be separating my pile from what I know I got out of this box, though. I haven't done that. Well, let's just do it. I got your attention. And then I'll do a couple packs out of the wax to show you that I'm not going to get anything, and hopefully I'm wrong. There's Boslo. <laughs> There's an error that I've, I've never seen two versions of, so I'm not sure it exists. But it's, I spelled his name wrong, Boslo, on the checklist. There's Moses again, but it's the corrected version. There's Sheffield. Got quite a few Sheffields. That's nice. Nicely centered. Is that one as perfect as I can see? I'm not a grader. I don't get flip cards to get graded, but that looks perfect to me. And so when I have a perfect card that is going to go into my PC, I put a 10 on it. It doesn't mean it's a 10. It means if I ever did decide to send in a bulk grading thing, it would be these cards that go in. That looks like a perfect Sheffield to me, so that's pretty rad. Oops, I've seen that. Now. Pretty rad, I'll take it. I'm liking this box more and more with every pack. Down to the final six. Bill Doran. I probably should have saved this for last because the honest truth is once I get through this box, I think I have just jumped to open. And once I, when I sit down to open cards late at night like this, it's usually kind of like, ah, oh, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of the night. Rip into whatever I have in front of me, have some fun with it for a while. So, uh, I'll probably keep ripping some cards. I got a bunch of hockey packs that are... Worthless, but still fun. Jeff Treadway. Still never seen the Treadway with the target. Oh, man, that's a card I'd love to have. Not that I care that much about it, but I've opened so much of this product that I know how rare it is because I've never got it. Uh, and so it would just be kind of neat to check that off the list. All right, all right. So we're BJ Serhoff, one of my favorites. So now, here's the thing. If we do get another Randy Johnson, I don't think there's really any chance that it will be a variation. If we do get another, there's my Keith. It's the corrected one. If we do get another Ripken, I, you know, I'm praying for a scribble. Um, that would be pretty neat. And I know I pulled a scribble out of here, so maybe they come... You know, maybe you can get multiples in a box. That would be awesome. That's probably the ultimate best thing I could hope for in my last four packs here is another Ripken Scribble. I don't know if I mentioned it on this video. There's also the Ripken Write-Out Variation. And I'm a big skeptic on that one. I'm not sure it actually exists. Well, I know the card exists, so don't get me wrong. I'm not sure it actually exists in the sense that you can pull it from a pack. I know there's a buttload of counterfeits out there. Wade Boggs. This is another super rare one, right, Wade Boggs? If you ever find the Wade Boggs without that little black smudge, it exists. I've never seen one. I do know people who have it, so that's a really rare one. I haven't found it in early print run, late print run, factory sets, uh, nothing. But I'd like to get that variation. Most people don't even know about that one or wouldn't care. Oh, there he is. Yep, there's Ripken. Okay, we do have another one. Drum roll, 
please, let's hope for not the black box. <laughs> we want anything but black box, but since I got a scribble already, I think we've got a decent shot at a scribble. Yeah, we got a scribble. And this one is nice. Ah, <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, all right, made my night with that one. There we go, baby. So I got a, this is a, at this point now, I've pulled Griffey, Johnson, two Ripkins out of this box. This is an absolutely legit silver box that was untouched. And the other one, I don't know, maybe I gotta go back and dig deeper. I opened half the silver box and got nothing, but half the box is still sitting there. So maybe, um, I don't know which half I looked at. Got so excited there. Uh, so maybe it's just that all the good cards were in the second half, but it was pretty bad. There we go. There's my keeper. And let's take a look in comparison. Well, this one's pretty nice too, actually. Oh, this one has some weird funky corners. It's got, can you see that? It's got a little fuzz off the corner, like I could nick that with scissors and nobody would ever know. Uh... I'm not gonna. And this bottom corner, just a tiny little bit dented. This one, I mean, it's got a little fuzz too, but a little bit less. This one is near perfect. It's just got a little extra fuzz on the two corners. So this is definitely a PC. Other than that, these two look the same to me. I know there's variations in the scribbles and this is and that's. I, yeah, I don't see anything there. Uh, this is cheating a little bit because I told you about my 10 system. This one's, I don't think it's quite perfect, but the centering is really nice. And the only issue with the corners is extra stuff popping out. There's extra little bits of fuzz on the corners. I don't see any printer marks or anything like that. So that's got a 10, because it, at the very least, it's going into my PC. Uh, so I cheat myself a little bit. But that's actually good. I've cheated much harder than that before. <laughs> Just to give myself, like, oh, yeah. I got a 10 there. There's Bo Jackson. Uh, just to make myself feel good about getting a good card, you know? Like I said, these go into my PC anyway if I get a 10. So, three packs left. You think we can hit anything out of three? I've only hit one Randy. I guess I could hit another Randy. I don't think it would yield, uh, like I said, I think it would be the fully corrected one, but you never know. I have heard of people getting a black box and a scribble or other variation. Wait, maybe black box and pull error out of the same box, but you never know their scenario either, right? Like, did they have a box that was not all not all together at one point? Uh, you never know when people say they've done this or seen that or whatever. Oh, that goes back to I was talking about the whiteout. I think when I uh, got... There's Manny Tree. I said I haven't seen too much of him. I think we'll get the corrected here because I'm seeing corrected on even Heath and Brookings. Yeah, Trio's corrected. So we're not getting any of the minor errors really even. But uh, the, I've always wanted a box with that scribble print run, which I know is like right in the middle of the print run, maybe even toward the late end, because everything else is corrected, right? <laughs> That's how I know there's so many of the, uh, the fuckface errors. Because when you get, you can get a fuckface error, and all these other cards are corrected. <laughs> I've had boxes like that. Um, I think the Brookens and Heath were the late, oh, this is the same cards I just got now. Uh, with a late, there's a trickway, late error corrections along with the Ripken. All the other ones, well not all, there's a whole bunch, but most of the other well-known ones were corrected earlier than the Ripken. So anyway, the reason I'm a skeptic about the whiteout is because I still have never, I've never pulled one out of a pack, and I've never talked to someone who's pulled one out of a pack or seen one out of a pack. And that includes, I've asked on Facebook forums, I've asked on blowout forums, 
and said, hey, I'm not sure this card exists. Has anyone actually pulled one? Has anyone actually seen someone pull one? And I've never had a person say, yes, I've had a person say, oh, it exists, I promise you, I have graded one, <laughs> or something like that, but not, oh yeah, I pulled it, <laughs> I saw it pulled. So, last pack out of what has been a really cool solo box. There's a Kevin Romine error. I mentioned the different print runs, early error, early, late, whatever. The Romine was the latest corrected error, I believe. That is not Kevin Romine. If you get the card with him, it's a totally different picture with him with his arms cro crossed. That is, I don't know who this is, but it's the wrong picture. So that is an error, but it's one of those few errors where the corrected version is actually more rare than the error version. I think just because of the nature of errors, most people would say they'd rather have the error card, unless you know. Steamy heap of trash. Heap of trash as a... Oh, there's a Biggio. Cool. Cool little bonus hit. We didn't get a second Johnson. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Now, there's a nice Craig Biggio. Looks nice, actually. Sent it up. The reason I pulled Danny Heap, he's an error, but he was one of the very first errors corrected. I've only got maybe two of the error cards, so I don't there's no way this is the error. Oh, uh, the... The corrected will say San Antonio and San Antonio. The error, I think, is Lake Hills. Yeah. San Antonio, San Antonio. The, the Lake Hills is here on the error. Uh, not worth anything, but my knowledge of how many I've opened is it's far more rare than the Billy Ripken error. It's just who cares about a Danny Heap error that says the wrong name? The Ripken error holds a lot more interest to people. I think she goes close to a 10 too. No, it's off center, but not badly. Um, anyway, that's that for the cello box. Put all these, sorry for the bump. Put all these back in here. If you're watching this, hopefully you learned something. If you're watching this and you're an honest person, hopefully I'm educating. I'm a little concerned about saying, uh, letting every, you know, I mean, this is the Wizard of Oz, right? Let, let him behind the curtain. Uh, I just told everybody everything I know about how easy it would be to, sequ to sequence somebody and rip somebody off if you got a rack box or a solo box. So my hope is that this doesn't actually give ammunition to anyone who would take advantage of it. Um, I, I, you might be, I probably sh should have disclaimed this, you might be watching this going, man, this guy here is the one I don't trust because he knows all the sequences and knows about how it happens and this and that. And it's somewhat true, like I said, I, I, I notice, like, I go, oh man, I think that's right before something good. You know, when I hit the Randy Johnson, I was like, oh yeah, I, I kind of knew it was coming, maybe three cards ahead. Anyway. Uh, rest assured, I, I always rip. <laughs> and if I were to take a box, like, I considered this when I started to realize that they were um, Frankenstein boxes to begin with. I thought I'll open some and sell some and, you know, say this is a Frankenstein box with the rack packs that I have. Now that I am so certain that they're actually not just Frankenstein, but searched, as in somebody went through and knew the sequences of the cards on top and pulled out the good rookies and errors, I am going to rip all the ones I have uh, myself anyway. <laughs> and I'll do some of them right now. Let's see. the equivalent of nine packs. And the point I'm trying to prove here is that I don't think we will see a Griffey, Ripken, Johnson, probably not even Smoltz. I don't know, 
BGO Sheffield, I feel like I maybe saw a couple of those. And I don't think we'll see any errors, and maybe not even corrected versions of some of those errors. I, I'm hoping to prove myself wrong, but the point I'm trying to prove is that I have not pulled anything good out of the rack packs yet. A couple of a couple uh, BGOs on top of racks. So I don't think somebody, I guess given that, I don't think somebody was trying to take out the BGOs. Is he one of those kind of guys who is kind of a late bloomer? So let's just assume this, by the way. Let's assume this all happened in 1989, when these were hot, but the searches happened then. BGO was a late bloomer. Smoltz might have even been a late bloomer. What I should have done is busted out my Beckett, my really, really old Beckett from the 80s. I'm going to try and do this real quick and see if there's another rookie who was hot back then that I might be missing out of these. Let me peek. I'm gonna, this might take me a second, but I feel like I should be able to find an old Beckett. description I just said, uh, Ramon Martinez. <laughs> Have we seen any Ramon Martinez? He might be the guy we're talking about. Hmm. So I guess I would say I would also be surprised if I see a Ramon Martinez. <clears throat> Alright, this is the back it open first. Let's hope I'm wrong. Do to do, Mattingly. I hate, one thing I hate a little bit about myself right now is that I hate when somebody doesn't even enjoy what they're doing. Like, oh, it's just a Mattingly. Like, I don't even stop for a Mattingly. But. I'm kind of on a mission here, on a hunt, to, sh to show something else, so. And, yeah, I've got enough manning least from 89 Flair. Joe Hesketh. Mike Heath. Hey, maybe we get a Brookins on the back. We do! <laughs> I had pulled an error. So, first pack. Oh, it's not a big error, but pulled an error. So that's interesting. That this rack was from at least an earlier print run than the box we just opened that was Sellers. There's no one on it. <sighs> That's funny. Right. Like I said, hope I'm wrong. That doesn't, to me, that doesn't prove anything because it's the monkey there. Uh -huh. well, maybe it's time to. You had a Neil Allen. I told you I haven't seen even a Neil Allen. Maybe he was... I mean, that was one of the hot errors at one point. When I was a kid, I mean, I was 12, 13 at this time when these came out. And collecting heavily. But I knew about the Ripken. I don't think I ever had it. I don't know. I don't remember doing a lot of 89 Fleer when I was a kid. I don't think I had the Ripken, but I did know about it for sure. Um, I probably had the black box version. But I wasn't, I was too young to, or maybe not quite in the know enough to to really know every little detail about what's going on at the card shows and what the big dealers are doing. Barry Larkin, Andre Dawson, Trammell, Alamar, Rocket Roger, Carney, Dykstra. No, nothing, nothing, nothing there. Nothing doing there. Get at least one more rack. I'm at 40 minutes. Anybody watching for 40 minutes? Probably not. Will I post this? I don't know, probably not. I do this. I have so many videos I haven't posted, but most of them are just random ripping. This one I, I might post just because 
Um, I'm actually talking about a specific thing. Actually, and I hit the scribble Rubicon. Um, so I hit something cool too. So I'm, I might actually post this one. If I don't, <laughs> it's because I realize that it's a mistake to put this much information out on a video and give the, um, give the pack searchers more information. So I, I want to fight for the good guys, not the bad guys here. Um, and this is more about giving people the information to know what your risks are when you buy not just 89 FLIR, but cellos and racks in general, especially FLIR. Uh, I feel like Donruss does not have the sequencing issues like FLIR does. FLIR is really, really sequenced. Tops I don't know about. Donruss I don't know about. I think FLIR is the one who does more of the consistent sequences. So, let's do two more racks. Um, I don't think there's going to be anything in them. <laughs> Hence what we just saw. But I did hit an error, so now I feel like, ah, I've got to show you that was just a malfunction. sell off the ones I have that had a star show in the BGO. Um, maybe Clavin. Anybody call it Clavin? I have one. The one of them has uh, three Hall of Famers, or at least three star players. I'll dig it out in a second. Just to tell you guys, just to show you guys. That's the other thing. You could have somebody who doesn't know anything that I just told you about the sequences. They could go through the rack box and pull out any anyone with a sh star showing. Craig Jeffries. And <clears throat> put everything and, you know, fill it up with packs from a different box. Kurt Gibson. Can't take a move. The Colvay. Cannon Arms. Doc. Mackie Sasser. The reason I pulled out two more packs is I think that's how many will fit in the box I'm filling up here with my with my comments is Moses. Not the Moses error, correct? Yeah, he would say Tempe on the back for the error instead of Phoenix. Oh, I might be out. I might be out of room now. Shucks. To find someone to put these three packs. So, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you found this interesting. Maybe even fascinating if this is all news to you. Um, other risks. Might as well throw it out there. Other risks. Wax packs. Certain wax packs tend to be easy to open and to search or whatever. The only time that I actually will, that I actually have ever done anything dishonest with packs that I've got. Not even, they, they weren't even packs that I've got, I'll tell you my story. So, well, hear me out before you judge me by saying, oh, I did something dishonest. Uh, I was 12 years old, it was 1988, and my buddy's friend, no, my, my friend, my buddy's dad, collected wax boxes. There's a Vandenberg, we'll check that in a second, tell my story first error. <clears throat> he collected wax boxes, so he stacked these boxes in the closet in the card room, you know, and we would go down there and look at all those boxes and salivate. And one day, it was like the afternoon or whatever, we're 12 year olds, we're sitting at home at his place, hanging out like he, hopefully we got an error pack here, if no one ran. And, uh, it w we go, you know what, I've heard, like, I've heard you can just open these wax packs and then close them back up with an iron. My dad would kill us if he knows that we 
we're in here looking at cards or whatever. Box. We got a few errors to check for. Told you we had an Ozzy Smith on top. Let's see what we got. Uh, anyway, we opened the whole box, looked at all the packs, didn't change anything, didn't take out the stars. We just wanted to have the fun of opening the packs and got out the old iron and sealed them back up. Now, I don't know how good of a job we did as 12 year olds. What I can say is I felt like we covered our tracks and uh, as far as I know, he never got in trouble for that. So let's see what we got for Bob's. We got the schmutz. Let's see what we got for, I think Heath is the most likely to be the error. Could see a Brookens. We do. We got a Brookens error. And Vanderberg, I think we're probably looking at corrected. I think his error says left dot dot dot. And his corrected version says he throws left. Throws left. So we have the corrected here. So in the same pack, so this tells you where we are in the print run. This is an error. This is corrected. So as I said earlier, the Heath and Brookens errors were one of the latest ones corrected along with the Billy Rifkin. Uh, but the Heath is an error. The errors are certainly more rare than corrected on those. Maybe not by much. <clears throat> and there you have it. Open any more of those right now. So, that was fun. And out of all that, did some learning, and we got a beautiful Ripken. We did get a Griffey. We did get a Johnson. So we hit all the things we should have hit. I don't think there's a card we didn't get. I don't think there's a card we didn't get out of the. It was over half of a cello box. It was over a wax box. So that makes sense. Um. We didn't get two of any of these, though I know I had already pulled the Scribble Ripken out, earlier out of this box. So that box was totally legit and and high on my want list because I had never opened a Scribble uh, myself. And I don't think I've said this on this video, but the way that I collect is I have a little checklist and I try to open all of the cards I want myself. Now that's a dumb way to do it way more expensive, but it's way more fun. So I've opened, you know, a lot of the key rookies through the 80s. As an adult, I have not opened the Griffey from Upper Deck. So that's my top want, along with 1985's uh, Maguire, especially Maguire. So 85 tops. I've not opened... I don't think I've opened any of the rookies out of 85 tops. I did. I've got all the 83's out of Donruss and Fleer. And on tops, I did get almost a whole box of 83 tops once. Um, and it had Sandberg and Gwyn, I believe I missed Boggs. It might have been Gwyn, I missed. I got two out of the three big ones. But my point is I have this running checklist. So now I can mark off the Billy Ripken scribble. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'm Brad U. That was a look behind the curtain of 89 Fleer. Errors sequences, what to watch out for when buying. Thanks for watching.